We're back and you're watching Live at 9. It's been around since 1927, but for more than two decades, this building on Memphis's Cleveland Street sat empty. What started as Sears Crosstown has become Crosstown Concourse, and its past, future, and present have been captured in the newest book from one Mid-South author. It's called Sears Crosstown in Memphis, and the man behind it, Bill Haltom, joins us live this morning. Bill, welcome back to Live at 9. Good to see you. How have you been? Fine, Alex. It's great to be back on and always love, love to talk to you about uh, stories that I like to share. And the Sears Crosstown story and the Crosstown Concourse story is a fabulous Memphis story. It indeed is. If you would, Bill, let's, let's take it back in time just a little bit, those early years. And this building was known by many as the Wish Building. Why was it called that? It was called that because the Sears catalog was the Wish book. <laughs> and the Sears catalog was at one time said to be the second most read book in America behind the Bible. And uh, it was developed by Sears in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, and it was original. It was the original Amazon.com, Alex, because because millions of people uh, had a circulation of about three million and people could get the catalog and order something. And guess where it came from? If you were in the southeast United States, it came from the distribution center <laughs> at Sears Crosstown. Fifteen hundred people working there every day processing 45,000 catalog orders a day. Wow, Bill, that is fascinating to say the least. Let's talk about the building itself and the community around it because at one time that area really flourished, did it not? Well, it did, and at first, first because of Sears Crosstown. When, when uh, Julius Rosenwald and, and, and General Robert Wood, the two visionaries that brought uh, the distribution center to, to Memphis. At that time, it was two miles away from any retail part. It was, but it was by a rail, by a railroad line, and uh, and they realized that this was the future for it. And uh, for decades after Sears was created in 1927, after the Sears Tower was created for decades, uh, the whole community around it flourished, flourished a great deal, until unfortunately Sears declined in the 1980s, and that's when. Sears Crosstown was, was locked up for about 20 years, only to be reopened uh, in the last few years thanks to some real great visionaries in, in Memphis who came up with an idea that most people thought couldn't work, most people thought would be impractical. Wow. So Bill, during that uh, decline of Sears, how was the entire community, how was the city of Memphis impacted by this? Because, I mean, so many of us pass by that structure almost on a daily basis or at least once a week and you look and you wonder about its history. So what happened with Sears there and what led to this resurgence? Well, what happened with Sears, of course, uh, Sears was the biggest retail establishment in the world from the 1920s to through the through the 70s, uh, primarily because of the catalog and the, and the distribution center. Of course, they got a lot of competition in the 1970s and it began to decline. And uh, when it declined, unfortunately, and it closed, uh, 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 the, the surrounding neighborhood uh, uh, declined as well, even though it had been a fabulous crosstown neighborhood. Now, it's coming back now. And it's coming back in large measure because of two visionaries, uh, the developer Staley Cates, who bought the building in 2008, and, uh, and the visionary art historian Todd Richardson, who uh, along with his friend uh, Staley Cates came up with this vision to create a vertical urban village Crosstown Concourse, and that's what we had today, and it's been there since 2017, and it's, I say, it was called the Wish Building by Memphians for years. It's the <laughs> Wish Building again, in many ways, because of the presence of healthcare there, residents there, uh, 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 restaurants there, schools there, fabulous place, fabulous place. And, and Bill, for those who've never even gone over there before, which of course they should, it is such a reflection of the community as a whole, is it not? No question about it. And it it is the original Sears architecture of this Art Deco tower. Uh, it's been restored, but it's the original uh, place there. You know, Alex, I'm a lot older than you. I'm 69 years old, and I'm a <laughs> lifelong Memphian. And when I go in there, it brings back, floods back memories. I can remember how the place smelled. That a candy counter that had the aroma of, of chocolate and candied corn and all this. They have a candy station back there again today. They have the beautiful staircases that wind up uh, through the central atrium there. And it brings back a lot of memories for us old time Memphians, but young people are residents there, going to Crossville High School there, part of Teach for America residency programs there. They're all there. And uh, it's just a fabulous, exciting place uh, that has been reborn uh, as a vertical urban village. Bill, we can sense the passion definitely uh, in your voice and, and the look on your face. You've written about nine books now. This story in itself, how unique was it for you to, to, to really tackle this one? 
Well, I became interested in the story uh, a few years ago when 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 the when Todd Richardson, uh, the president of Crosstown uh, Concourse and the uh, an art history professor at the University of, of Memphis, began to work on this vision. My wife Claudia has head of the Step Ahead Foundation, and they put their headquarters uh, uh, in there. And I just said, you know, this is a great story because you see, I had watched, I'd, I'd loved the, the heyday of it. I'd sadly watched the decline. I used to drive past it twice a day when it was mm. closed. When I was working downtown, I would drive past it in the morning and drive past it at night. I remember when the red Sears lights on the top were extinguished, and I just waited for that resurrection of the building, and it came. And when the, when that resurrection started to come back, uh, that rebuilding started to come back, I said, I want to share this story because it is such a great Memphis story. That building is not just a building. It's not just an edifice. It's about people. It's about people in this city, uh, people that work there, that have shared life there together. Dr. Scott Morris of the Church Health Center that has uh, that has uh, their big center uh, there and providing health care every day. Right. He says we're stronger together. We're stronger together yes. because of Crosstown Concourse. So it's, it's, just, it's not just about a building, Alex. It's about a fabulous place, a fabulous place where people have lived together and worked together uh, for decades and are now back there again building something. All right, Bill, those wishes can come true. Bill Holton, Absolutely. good to see you. Glad you took on this new project. A great well, book. Thank you share. very much, Alex. I appreciate it. If you want to come back across town concourse next Tuesday night, I'm going to be signing books from 530 <laughs> <Okay>. to 630. <laughs> you know how to put it out there. Bill, always good to see you. Take care. Sears Crosstown in Memphis. Z back.